Hey! In the previous video, we discussed that there is hidden Markov model that can be used for part-of-speech tagging. We have briefly discussed how to train this model. Now, how can we apply this to our texts? This slide is just a motivation for the next video to show you that it is actually not that simple problem. So, for example, you can see a sequence of words, a beer likes honey, and you can see that it can be decoded in different ways. So, the sequence of text in the top and in the bottom of the slides are both valid. So, both sequences could generate this piece of text, right? This is because we have very ambiguous language. Uh, for example, likes can be noun or verb or something else, maybe, if we think about it. Okay, then how can we generate the most probable sequence of text given a piece of text? This is called decoding problem, and this is uh, formalized in the bottom of the slide. So we need to find y, which maximizes the probability of y given x. Uh, and as we have briefly discussed, it would be the same as y that maximizes the probability of both variables. Now, could we probably just compute the probabilities of all y's and uh, then choose the best one? Well, not actually, because this brute force approach would be really slow, right? Or maybe not feasible at all, because you have very many different sequences of text. Let's say you have a uh, big T, which is the length of the sentence, and you have 10 possible states, then you will have T to the power of 10 different uh, sequences, right? So this is too much. But fortunately, there is uh, an algorithm based on dynamic programming that can help us to do this effectively. Uh, before we go to it, I just want to recap the a main formula for hidden Markov model. So, please remember that we have the probabilities of uh, y given the previous y, which are called transition probabilities, and then we have output probabilities, and we multiply them by the positions to get our total probability of both variables. Okay, so this is probably the main slide here, which tells you what is Viterbi algorithm. Let us go through it slowly. We would like to find a sequence of text that is the most probable to generate our output sentence. However, we can do it straightforwardly. So let us first start with finding the uh, most probable sequences of text up to the moment t that finishes in the state s. So those big QTS things. And let us denote by small q t s the probabilities of those sequences. Now, how can we compute those probabilities effectively? We can say that once we have computed them for the time moment t minus 1, we can use that to compute the next uh, probabilities for the next time moment. How do we do this? Well, we see that we have our transition probabilities and output probabilities, as is said by the hidden Markov model. And then we have these green uh, QT minus 1 probabilities that hide the transition probabilities and output probabilities for all the previous time moments. Okay, and then we apply maximum, because remember, we are only interested in the most probable sequences. Now, when we compute these probabilities, we are also interested in the argmax, uh, because the argmax will tell us what are the states where these probabilities uh, can be found. Okay, probably it is not yet clear for you, so during the video I'm going to show you lots of pictures and examples to explain how this algorithm works. Let us say that we have some hidden Markov model. And it is already trained for us. So, so this is A matrix, which has probabilities of some states given some other states, right? Our transition probabilities. Each row sums into one, which means that we have indeed correct probabilities. 
Now, I have a question for you. Do you think that something is missing in this matrix? So, if you remember from the previous video, uh, we had also our special start state. And we would need to have a special first row in this matrix that will have the probabilities of some states given this special start state. For now, let's say that uh, this row is just filled with equal probabilities. So it is just a uniform distribution. Okay, so we have these parameters for A matrix. And we have this B matrix, which tells us the probabilities of the output uh, tokens given some states. Awesome. Now let us imagine that our Viterbi algorithm has already computed the probabilities up to some moment. So we have some probabilities up to the beer in our sequence. Now, how can we compute the probabilities for the next time moment? Uh, for the first state, for adjective state, we can try to go from different previous states and we have transition probabilities, different transition probabilities for each of them. And we have also the output probabilities uh, to generate likes in this case. Now, we need to find maximum. So we need to find the best way. And in this case, it would be this one. So we find this way and we say that the probability is now composed by three things. The previous probability that we had so far, the transition probability, and the output probability. Now let us try to do the same for the next state. So another state is noun, and we again need to compare different paths. So we have three paths. Which one would be chosen this time? So this time we will choose this one, because the multiplication of three components again will be maximum for this one, right? So this will be that value. And we could compute this. Now we perform the same thing for the uh, last state. So here we have this path. We choose this one and compute the probabilities. And are we done? Well, we could compute the probabilities for the next time moment. Um, and this way we can move forward but it is very important to remember the best transitions that we used. Why? Because this is how we are going to find our best path for the states. This is what we compute for every time moment. Now let us zoom out and see what is happening for the whole sentence. So this is what you get if you compute all the probabilities and remember all the best transitions. Now, once again, what are those best transitions? So, for example, the path that goes through adjective, noun, verb, and noun is the most probable sequence of text that generates our sentence and finishes in the state noun. Okay, this is just the definition. And the probability of this path is written down there near the noun. Okay. So what do we need to compute now? We have these three candidates that can finish in one of the three states for honey. Remember, we need the most probable one ever. So we need to compute maximum once again. Uh, we need to compute maximum. It would be noun. And then we take it and we say that, okay, the last state in our sequence should be noun. And then we backtrace to verb, to uh, noun, and to adjective to get the sequence of text that is the best in this case. Awesome. We are done with the pictures. This slide just summarizes everything that we have already said. So to create your best path, you need to first allocate an array, Q, of the dimension, the number of words in your sentence by the number of states in your model. Then you need to fill the first column in your matrix, right? So for the first time moment, it is rather easy to compute the probabilities of the states. This would be just uh, the probabilities to 
uh, come to these states from the initial start state multiplied by the probability to output the first word in this current state. Now, after that, you have a loop. So you go through all your positions in time and you go through all your states and compute those max values and argmax values. After that, you have your last column. You apply argmax once again to find what would be the tag for the last word in your sentence. After that, you backtrace all your tags for the path. And you are done. You get your best path. So this is decoding in hidden Markov models. And this is really useful, not only in part of speech tagging, actually, but also, for example, for some uh, signals and other sorts of data when you have different states that can generate some outputs. So this is all for this video. And in the next one, we will discuss a few more models that are similar to hidden Markov model.